what must I do to inherit eternal life? And God answers by saying, I want you completely and totally. I give myself totally to you, and I want you to give yourself totally to me. And last week we heard Jesus ask James and John the question, can you drink the cup that I drink? And the answer is that sacrifice and service are required to follow Jesus Christ. This week, we hear Jesus ask Bartimaeus the question, what do you want me to do for you? And Bartimaeus answers, I want to see. This is a very interesting answer, and we'll discuss that more in just a few moments. But the true power of today's gospel passage really comes from understanding what is happening in Mark's gospel. Mark uses this thing called a sandwich. And what is a sandwich in the gospel? Well, it's just like a sandwich that we eat at lunch. Two pieces of bread with stuff in between. Today's passage is one of the pieces of bread in the sandwich. The other piece happened a few weeks ago when we heard the story of the blind man at Bethesda. So our bread is two healings that Jesus does of blind men. The first healing at Bethesda Someone brings the blind man forward, and Jesus takes great effort to heal his blindness. The first time, he takes mud and puts it in his eye, and the man can see dimly. So he has to do it a second time. It's a very difficult effort for Jesus. But in today's gospel, Bartimaeus is healed without even being touched. Just by his word, Jesus heals him. But what really makes a sandwich great? It's the stuff in between. If someone put liverwurst in between two slices of bread, I would not eat it. If they put bologna or ham, I'm more likely to eat it. So it's the stuff between those two stories that I think is most interesting for us to reflect on today. And what is the stuff between those two healings? Three times, Jesus predicts his passion. And three times, there's an interesting reaction by the disciples to Jesus' prediction. The first prediction of his passion, Peter messes up. Peter says to him, you can't go to Jerusalem and die. And Jesus tells him he must. Jesus then explains to the disciples what true discipleship means. It means that we must pick up our cross and follow Christ. In a surprising statement, defeat is actually victory, the cross. Shame and humiliation in Jesus' world is actually victory, again, the cross. In the second prediction, the reaction of the disciples is to debate who is the first, who's the best, who's the most important, who should be their leader. And Jesus then goes on to explain to them the meaning of eternal life using the story of the rich man, that God wants us completely devoted to him because he is completely devoted to us. And then last week, Jesus has his third prediction of the passion. And what's the reaction of the disciples? Well, we have James and John who stand up and ask Jesus for power and glory, seats of power and glory. And Jesus goes on to explain the true purpose of his mission. He actually gives us his mission statement given to him by the Father, probably the most important verse in all of the Gospels, where he says, for the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for the many. And so we come after that statement to Bartimaeus. He's blind, but he truly sees more clearly than the disciples. He gets Jesus in a way the disciples have completely failed to see him. He may not see with his eyes physically, but he sees with the eyes of faith. And in the gospel, he says the words, he calls out to Jesus, says, have pity on me. But really, what is he asking for? He's asking for mercy. He's calling out to Jesus for mercy. Have pity on me, son of David. Every Mass, we start with a penitential rite, and we start with the same proclamation that Bartimaeus makes. We say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Just like Bartimaeus, we are crying out with the eyes of faith as we begin the celebration of the Eucharist. Bartimaeus believes that once Jesus is aware of his condition, Jesus will change it. Jesus will heal him. Bartimaeus is persistent in his prayer. 
and it pays off. But his prayer is for God to have mercy on him. Not praying for a particular thing, but first and foremost, asking for mercy. Our first prayer should always be for God to have mercy on us, to give us maybe not what we want, but what we truly need in his eyes so that we can help build the kingdom of God. Notice there's a difference between what the disciples, James and John, ask for, glory, they want glory and power, versus what Bartimaeus wants. He wants to be able to see so that he can follow Jesus. Bartimaeus' pure faith allows the power of God to work in him without even being touched. Does our faith allow God to work through us today to build up the kingdom of God here in the present time? Or are we more like the man at Bethesda who struggles to see the power of God in our lives? Bartimaeus sees through spiritual sight and it leads him to physical sight. And now it's Bartimaeus' turn to follow Jesus. At the end of the gospel, Bartimaeus follows Jesus on the way. But where on the way is he following Jesus? Well, physically, he's following Jesus to Jerusalem. Spiritually, he's following Jesus to the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of God. Sometimes our sight, physical sight, can get in the way of our faith. There's distractions in many different ways. We turn aside from the way because the shiny object in our life distracts us from the true message of God. Sometimes we become discouraged along the way in very difficult times that we face, and we lose the way. And sometimes our vision of the way things should be, the path of God, is not actually God's vision. So what can we do? Well, we can keep our focus on the one thing that Jesus asked us to remain focused on, the sacraments. He gave us the gift of the sacraments so that we could be focused and strengthened to live in the world today. St. Augustine said that the sacraments are an outward sign of an inward grace that's been instituted by Jesus Christ. In other words, we see the physical, through physical sight, the sacraments. We watch and celebrate the Eucharist I'm sure most of us, all of us, have been to a baptism and have watched a baptism or been to confirmation and seen a confirmation. We've seen it with our physical sight. But today, can we see with spiritual sight the great gifts that God has poured out on us in the sacraments? The gift of the bread of life. The gift of his body and blood in the sacrament of the Eucharist. We will physically see the celebration of this Eucharist will we see it spiritually in our lives? And we need to spiritually see the grace that God is pouring out upon us in this moment to give us the strength and courage to face difficult times. We are on the exact same journey that the disciples were on with Jesus on the way to Jerusalem. Will we see with the eyes of the disciples who look for power and glory? Or will we see with the eyes of Bartimaeus who saw the way of Christ as sacrifice and suffering.